Hi, I'm Steve Clemens. I help run the foreign policy programs at the New America Foundation and publish the political blog, The Washington Note. And I'm here with Anwar Ibrahim, who is the former Deputy Prime Minister of Malaysia, the current head of the opposition in the Malaysian Parliament, a great uh, leader and advocate for democracy uh, and human rights. And we're very pleased to have him with us today at the New America Foundation and talking with us. We've been talking today a little bit about the affairs in Egypt, but I think at a more cosmic level, um, what the chances and the realities are uh, for democracy in the Islamic world um, and in the Arab world uh, as well. What, what do you think about that? I myself, as a sort of Nixonian realist, have always felt that democracy was an uneasy equilibrium. And I'm interested in whether you agree with that or if you have a different view. Well, in a sense, yes, I do share the sentiment. But then, you know, when you talk about democracy in the Muslim world, some of my colleagues have strong reservations uh, and, or, or concerns because they've, they've given examples of Indonesia and Turkey which have matured in the process. And, and uh, the development and the uh, upheavals unleashed uh, by the people in Egypt debunk that notion that there was some difficulty culturally or historically. It is now seen, uh, proven, that it is the dictators and authoritarian leaders that actually um, is a major stumbling block to this whole uh, reform in the Muslim world. And do you think Egypt is different than Indonesia? Well, Indonesia has an influence uh, around the region. Egypt, although it is, uh, the, the, its stature and standing in the Muslim world has gone down, but then it is still, uh, its ramifications throughout purely because of the number, sheer numbers of Muslims going to other for Muslim institutions like Azhar. Uh, and, and some other, say Cairo or University of Alexandria, study medicine, um, as, and as I've said, hardly uh, any, any uh, family mm -hmm. but without having some sort of a connection, and the family member or the imam or the teacher uh, studying there. So whatever was happening in Egypt has, has generated so much interest in the Muslim world. I've not seen anything such like that in Indonesia and um, Malaysia. Are, are Malaysians watching what's going on in Egypt? Are they watching Al Jazeera? Are they, are they captivated uh, as we all are? Very closely, although the media there is controlled, so the government has downplayed like, mm. uh, the report in most Middle Eastern countries, so they resort to Al Jazeera. In our case, Al Jazeera is already in Arabic and in English, you know, in the na na national and the kind of languages. So we have that uh, problem too, but it's enough. We have generated interest because the, even the government the media has to cover, although it has downplayed, but they have covered it. People see the millions uh, who want to express themselves. Now, one of the allergies that America has is dealing with the Muslim Brotherhood and political Islam. I would say we have no strategy at all for out, outreach to what I see as a rising uh, political Islamic movement. Uh, and I'm not afraid of it. I believe in engagement. I've met responsible leaders in the Islamic movement. I think there can be constructive and unconstructive players in, in that world. You head an opposition in Malaysia that is in part secular, but is also Islamist and has a, has a religious dimension. What has been your experience in dealing with, I would call them affiliates, if you will, of, of the political Islamic movement? In the, uh, the system, there were message that uh, we respect um, freedom. We must engage. And uh, what could we can we can agree on principles, we can uh, discuss um, the parameters. Uh, and, and I find it odd to deny uh, a, a major group. Uh, the only sin is, of course, the Islamic labor. Uh, in the case of uh, the Ikhwan, uh, the Brotherhood, I mean, I know some of them, we have followed very closely, uh, partly because of my past association as a you know, Muslim youth leader, but also uh, because of the role and the, uh, in my uh, engagement with the Islamic party in Malaysia. Uh, every time I get to uh, Cairo, for example, I'll meet all the you know, secular liberal leaders, but I'll make it a point also to engage with the uh, Brotherhood. And I think it is uh, it's very difficult to get Egyptian generally, even secularists, to accept the notion that uh, you um, support the democratic process, 
but you marginalize groups. Mm, that's very good. And the last question I'd like to ask is, some of us are talking to the White House, and, and, and Americans, I think part of the curse of being an American is we ultimately try and twist every problem in the world into being about us. And uh, it's, it's unhealthy, but it's, but it's part of the, the situation here in Washington. I think that the storms that are, that are at play in Egypt are Egyptian storms, and the future of what is determined is in Egypt, Egyptian hands. But the United States still feels as if it must articulate a view, that it must uh, make, make um, statements, and it must react, and that it realizes that there are people in Egypt that are looking to what the U.S. does, and other, other nations. I have to interact with this government. What should I be telling the White House? What should I be telling Senator John Kerry um, as they look at this? What should be uh, the advice that you would give to the U.S. government in being a constructive and responsible player with regard to Egypt? Steve, you have the experience, you're an expert in this field. <laughs> but, but I think, um, I mean, they should give a consistent message that they respect freedom and democracy and, and uh, not necessarily on their terms. Some adjustments need to be made. Some uh, uh, foreign policy prescriptions of interest um, can be expressed. But you cannot dictate either the discourse nor the solution. And I think uh, the sooner we learn that, we will be the better. Because to assume that people have this inherent hatred for the Americans, I mean, it's always this phobia. I don't believe. Mm. I mean, I don't share that view at all. I may have strong views against America in some issue, on some issues, Afghanistan, for example. But uh, I've benefited immensely. The political process benefited immensely by our engagement with Americans. And I think if we take the correct move to say, look, we are consistently our foreign policy in, in the United States has always to support mm. uh, freedom and democracy. Uh, that's been you know, consistently uh, <coughs> expressed. This message will be related. People will see. I'm not saying that they will overnight come and change. Look, America's a great friend. There will be many who will still call America the center. Mm -hmm. But I think, and I am convinced that it will um, change you know, the political landscape and the attitude. You see, I mean, I'm, I'm in touch with the opposition groups in Tunisia and uh, Egypt. I mean, every other night there will be uh, you know, long calls. It's interesting. When they knew that I was here, I mean, it's a big day, society meeting, mm -hmm. editorials, uh, edit, or New York Times, Times, etc. It's interesting. They said, What is their view? Are they supportive? Are you sure? You know, mm -hmm. it's interesting. The Egyptian opposition is asking you yeah. what we feel. Yeah. Well, tell them I'm very supportive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Please, I mean, we, will, we, we, we would like to see even I mean, yeah. Senator John Kerry coming up very yeah. strong. Because they say, are, are they really supportive of this change? Uh, why are they talking about Omar Sulaiman? Yeah. You know? So these questions are, which means what you say is still very important. And I, I think, in my, my mean, uh, this kind of some, some here, Mr. Yeah, they, they tend to downplay this or, or uh, uh, consider this less important. It's mm -hmm. not true. I mean, to, in Indonesia, the whole um, reformacy days, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, uh, I mean virtually it's closer to, I know virtually everyone, even those who are, you know, strong and hard and critical for you know, populist reasons to be, you know, it's always a hero, we tend to be to take a critical line against the uh, United States. But they always want to know, are they really genuinely supportive of this? Mm -hmm. Interesting. Anwar, thank you so much for being with us. I want to let everyone know that um, I am a fan of Anwar Ibrahim on Facebook. Uh, <laughs> what is your Twitter uh, handle? It's Anwar Ibrahim. Anwar Ibrahim. Uh, so at Anwar Ibrahim on, on Twitter. I'm S.C. Clements. Uh, this, is, uh, this is the way we're all communicating uh, our hopes for change. Yes, absolutely. Good to see you. Thank you very much for joining us.